after releasing the Notion Wiki, an out-of-the-box feature that allows you to build a wiki in Notion and have a very unique database structure where properties are displayed horizontally instead of vertically and where you can connect a home page with the structure of a database and add the page either on the database or on the home page and have that synced with the other view. Notion has now also released a full template that they call project management. They have a dedicated landing page for that. And that's a use case that they seem to be working to optimize a lot within Notion. So in this video, we are looking at the Notion project management release, what the template entails, if there are any new features that are worth noting and all the details about this new system. Let's get into it. I'm in my Notion workspace here and to use the new project management template, I will go to templates and here you will see that there are a few options. One is projects and tasks. And this template really, it is pre-built from the Notion team, but it doesn't have anything specifically worth nothing or new compared to what you can do if you build a projects database and a task database and related those two together. The only different thing is that this template has some properties that you can't delete. For example, you can't delete the status or the assignee in the tasks database. That is something that really you can't build by yourself in a Notion database yet but it's only an out-of-the-box feature that is unique to these projects and tasks template that Notion offers. The other option is projects, tasks, and sprints. And that's what we're gonna focus on on this video today, because that's really the main update that Notion refers to in their project management landing page. And here, there are a few features that are worth noting, especially regarding sprints. So we're gonna use this template and break it down right now. I will click get template and add to private and you will see right here that in my private section you can discard product wiki that is something that I already had but you will see that here I've had a few databases and pages imported here so first there is tasks then projects the sprint board and sprints so these are the databases at the foundation of the project management out of the box template that Notion offers and starting from tasks tasks are the actionable items in a project management system. These are the ones that you assign to specific people that have a due date that can be linked to projects. And in this case, that can also be linked to sprints. And sprints are short bouts of work focused on a specific set of tasks in order to advance a certain project. It is widely used, especially in the software industry to organize work around engineering or product teams. And the benefit of spins is that you can break down projects into multiple sort of milestones. So you can think of spins similar to milestones that last a specific time frame and that are focused on certain topics to advance the project that the team is working on. And here, this is the task database. And nothing is especially new here, really. So if we analyze this, we have a first view that is grouped by project meaning that's a table view, as we can see here. It is a table view and it is grouped by project. And that means that there is a relation between tasks and projects. So if we open a task, you will see here that we have a project property. The icon was changed, which you can do from here. And this project property is a relation property, which I can see right here. You can see that really I can't change that. And if I go to the projects database, that's what it looks like. So tasks are linked to both projects and sprint through a relation property. And you can see this print property is a bit of an unusual one when it comes to relations. You can see that here I have the open button, whereas if I hover over projects, I have the plus or minus icons that allows me to either choose a new project or delete the existing relation between this task and this project. Whereas for this print, I only have open and that's because this print database really behaves quite specially and it's a pretty unique new database that is quite fixed and specifically optimized for this use case. So if you open this print, you will see that you have completed tasks. That is a roll up from tasks based on the status percent per group done, as you can see from the configuration here. And you have dates of this print, the status, and some statuses can't be changed. So you would see there is current, there is next, and this can't be changed. And we can explore this more in detail 
in a few seconds because these two statuses are essentially automated in the sprint board that we're gonna analyze right now. Whereas future and past are manually selectable. And you will also notice that the new ID property that Notion released recently is used widely in this out of the box template, for example, to determine the sprint ID. So that's an ID property and the prefix is SPR. And then the suffix or the number here will be automatically generated incrementally for every sprint, in this case, that you create. Or if you look at the task database for every task that you create, this number is incrementally added right there. So really, this is all quite normal. And as per usual, as you would expect a database to be structured in Notion. If you look at properties, we will see that some properties can't be deleted. So if I look at the status property, you will see there is a lock icon here and I can't really delete it. I can duplicate it, I can hide it, but not delete it. And I can also change statuses here or add new status options. And that really is not possible if you were to build a database from scratch in Notion, at least right now. In addition, you will see that in tasks, there is a GitHub pull request property here. That is a synced property where you can sync your GitHub repositories with your Notion tasks or sprints or projects. And that's also a new property type really that you can use by connecting your GitHub workspace and then linking your Notion tasks with your GitHub pull requests. And this is really optimized for engineering teams using GitHub for their code development work. The new most relevant feature really in this template is a sprint board. And the sprint board, as you can see, is a linked view of tasks. That's a linked view of tasks. And tasks here are grouped by project, just like that, as you can see. So that's a board view. It is grouped by status and subgrouped by project. So each column is a status and each toggle is a project in a swim lane fashion. And you can see each task is a card that you can open like that to see all the information inside. You can also use parent and subtasks. That's an already existing feature in Notion that you can activate at any time really from the three dot menu and you have sub items here. And a new feature that you notice here on the top right hand side of this database view is complete sprint. That is a button in a database, not available to the public yet really. So if you build a database from scratch, you do not have this feature. This is only available right now in this specific out of the box application of Notion databases. And you can see here we have current sprint one. That's the name of the view. And this name can't be renamed. That's because that is automated. And then you have another view that is sprint planning, where you can see all the sprints and this one can be renamed. And you have a backlog of sprints and you can see all the filters applied here. Now, if we focus on the first view here, current sprint one, you can see that the filter is sprint is current and you can't delete this filter because you can't change the status of a sprint to current as we saw earlier. That is a locked feature, which is automated. It is not clear to me yet how the status of a sprint is determined because it doesn't look like it is based on the date. So you can't select the current or next status. But if I were to create a new sprint here and I were to select the date as something that is right now, you will see that the status is still future and I can only change it to past, but not next or current. So it doesn't look like the date is the determinant of that. So let's see if I were to delete all these sprints now and create a new sprint, let's call this sprint test. The status is future by default, but you can see that now because we do not have any sprints in the database, now I can select current or next. And if I select current, then I can also add my dates in here. And this is going to be the current sprint. And if I add a new sprint, now it's going to be future by default. But you can see I can also select next. And if I select next, then I can select my dates. Just like that. And now I can't change the statuses because I have a current sprint and I have a next sprint. So whatever sprint I add next will be future. And you can see I cannot select those two options. So we have three sprints right now, current, next and future. Let's go back to the sprint board. That is a task database view. 
and you can see that the current sprint is sprint one. We do not have any tasks in here. That's okay. That is just an example. And if you want to link past tasks to the sprint, you can just go here and you will find all those tasks and we can select the first test sprint just like that, just to populate a bit of data there. And then we can select the other sprints here. Now let's get back to the sprint board. And let's say for the sprint, we have completed it. Most of the tasks are done. Um, we have one task that is still in progress for this project specifically. And let's do complete sprint. You can see three out of four tasks were done. And I will click complete. And you can see that here there is a panel that is a quite novel application in Notion. And you can see the next sprint is sprint test 2. The start and the end dates are these ones, although I can select them from here. And there is one incomplete task from the current sprint. And Notion is asking me, what do you want to do with that? Do you want to move it to the next sprint? Move it to the backlog? So sitting there without any sprint associated with it? Or do you want to keep it in current sprint, but just keep it incomplete? So I can move it to the next sprint by default and complete the test sprint. And you can see that now the view is changing and the current is sprint test two. And now all the tasks for sprint test two are showing up here automatically grouped by project in the same exact swim lane view. And that is why you can't change this view really. This view only takes the current sprint automatically. And the current sprint is determined by the status and by the completion of the sprint that you can do here by clicking this button. And finally, in this template, you are able to see data inside the Notion page. So whenever you open a project, for example, you will see here there is a summary property that is an AI-based property. If you have Notion AI activated in your workspace, this property is enriched by AI and it is locked. And if you have it activated, you can check what the prompt looks like. It is likely a summary of the content inside the page. So if you write down what this product is about, then the summary text property will write a short summary regarding this project as a property in your project's database. And this as well is a new property type that Notion recently released and that is powered by Notion AI. And you can see inside the project, there is a template where you have all the tasks for that project showing up here. And this is a linked view of the tasks database that you can also find here where you can see all the tasks in one place, grouped by project or all the tasks. And you can use filters to quickly look at specific information within that database. And that is everything there is in the latest Notion project management out of the box template launched by Notion. If you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to drop them down below. You can find all the relevant links to learn more about this use case and all the ecosystem around it in the description of the video. Thanks for watching for now and see you soon.